magandang umaga, magandang hapon, or magandang gabi sa inyong lahat. Hello mga students. Pag-usapan po natin sa video lecture na ito ang income-based valuation method. Uh, in the previous um, presentations, we have talked about asset-based valuation na kung saan pag pinag-uusapan natin ay asset-based valuation, we are referring to the balance sheet or to the statement of financial position. Dito naman, in valuing the, the worth of a company or in any you know, no, valuation exercise, we also need to consider the economic or the performance of the company, which we cannot ano, no, get from the balance sheet because the performance is presented, is reflected in the statement of comprehensive income or in the statement of profit or loss, di ba? Income minus expenses, you have net profit or net loss. Okay? O kaya nga, ano, ang iba sa mga investors, iba sa mga, ah, basahin natin ito, ha? Uh, I-next slide ko muna. Ayan, ano? Ang sinasabi dito, many investors and analysts find that the best estimate for the value of the company or an asset no, is the value of the returns that it will yield or income that it will generate. Kasi syempre, di ba, when we are utilizing our resources, ginamit mo yung assets mo sa yung operations, nagkakaroon ka ng income generating activities. Okay? Nagkakaroon ka ng benta you are generating income. You are generating revenue. And if we will go back to the definition of the income, di ba, sa ating uh, conceptual framework, diba? income are, oh, sige ha, pakita natin dito, no? ayan, di ba? If you can still recall, no? income represents what? Increase in economic benefit. Okay, during the accounting period in the form of what? Increase in asset or decrease in liability that results in increase in equity other than contributions from equity participants, di ba? Okay, kabalik tara naman pag expenses, no? We are just simply recapping this one from our financial accounting, from our basic accounting, from the conceptual framework wherein those uh, terminologies are defined, di ba? So the expenses are the exact opposite of income, di ba? Now, siyempre, sabi ko nga, babalikan ko lang yung sinabi ko kanina, pag ang pinag-uusapan natin no, ay performance ng company, kumusta? Tumubo ba ito? Panalo? Ano ba? Kumita ba ito ngayong taon? Hindi naman yan makikita sa balance sheet, di ba? Kasi pag balance sheet, pinag-uusapan natin assets, liabilities, and equity. So, medyo alanganin ano, kung asset-based valuation lang ang ating pinag-uusapan. Eh, class, no? In practice, in reality, pagdating sa mga valuation exercises, no? The buying company or the selling company should also take into consideration the potential performance, future potential, no? Of the company. Lalong-lalo na, no? Halimbawa sa ngayon. Uh, marami sa mga tech giants like Facebook, like Google, like Microsoft, no? Ay bumibili ng mga startup companies na nakikitaan nila ng potential, lalong-lalo na pagdating sa field of technology, di ba? So, kung sakali man ano na ako si buying company, hindi ko lang naman titignan yung asset net assets niya. Eh kung maliit lang, starting lang ito, di ba? Ma mababa lang yung value noon. At the same time, si selling company, hindi lang naman niya i-consider yung kanyang net assets no? using asset-based valuation. Kasi, bakit nyo ba ako bibilhin? Pa? Isipin nun, no? ano ba ang mapapakinabangan ninyo sa akin? Eh, startup lang naman ako, pero bakit ako bibilhin ng isang malaking company? Eh kasi, no, nakikitaan niya kayo ng potential. Di ba? they will be investing in what they believe ano in you in your future potential so dito pong mapasok no yung income based valuation so we are considering no in a few years time in the 5 years time in 10 years time 
with the business model that you have, with the products or services that you are currently selling, which may be new to the market, but eventually will become mainstream. So, meron kang ano, no? exponential growth. And syempre, no? pag may potential ka sa business, at nabigyan talaga ng proper opportunity, ano, proper resources, proper capital. Malaki yung magiging revenue mo in the future. So dito, we also have to consider the returns, the income, the yield no, that it will generate. Okay? Now consider and remember that income is based on the amount of money that the company or assets will generate over the period of time. And syempre, no, pag income, we are referring to the the ano no the, the the portion without deducting any expenses kasi from the definition di ba of our income and expenses no? hindi po natin tinutukoy dito sa income yung net profit so etong amount na ito will be reduced by the costs that they need to incur in order to realize the cash inflows and operate the assets okay kaya nga dito no sinama na rin natin si expenses okay So, plus, uh, meron tayong dalawang conflicting theory or um, not necessarily conflicting, ano, kung hindi, um, well, sa bagay, conflicting or opposing. Mas magandang terminology siguro gamitin natin yung opposing theory. Okay? Meron tayong tinatawag na dividend irrelevance model or theory and then the dividend relevance. So basically ano pinagkaiba natin etong term na ito IR. Okay, irrelevant, relevant. So sa madaling salita, no. Under the dividend irrelevance, walang bearing in measuring the price of the stock, no? Walang bearing yung dividend sa pagdedetermine what is the proper price of the stocks. Okay? Samantalang pag dividend relevance We have to consider the dividend. Kasi nga, relevant yung dividend. Okay? Tawag din po natin dyan ay bird hand theory. Okay? Now, anong sinasabi dito? Let me just read from the book. Because here, I just simply uh, presented it to you no, in visuals. O, anong sinasabi? In income-based valuation, investors consider two opposing theories. Okay, the dividend irrelevance theory was introduced by, ah, hindi lang ako sure ha, kung tama ang pronunciation ka dito, Modigliani and Miller, no? And they support or this theory, no, supports the belief that the stock prices are not affected by dividends or the returns on the stock, but more on what? The ability and sustainability of the asset or company. So, ang basihan natin ano, in measuring properly ay yung ability, kakayahan, at yung sustainability of the asset or company. No? Sustainability especially when we are talking about long run, in the long run. So, uh, on the other hand, bird in the hand theory, bird in the hand, okay, bird in hand ang nailagay ko pala dito no? believes that dividend or capital gains has an impact on the price of the stock okay now plus please take note once the value of the asset has been established investors and analysts are also particular about certain factors that can be considered to properly value the asset. At eto, yung tatlong factors na ito, no? Ah, sorry, nakalagay din pala dyan. Binasa pa natin, no? But anyway, so, ayun na na, class. Uh, whether, basahin na dito, or pakinggan niyo yung binasa ko kanina, no? Parehas lang naman yan. Uh, at least, dito makikita niyo pala. Okay, now, we are, ano no, in, in the book, we have mentioned factors Okay? Ano-ano itong mga factors na ito? Certain factors that must be considered in properly valuing the asset. Plus, 
Ito po ang mga sumusunod. Tatlo po yan. Number one, the earning accretion or dilution. Number two, we have the equity control premium. And number three, we have the precedent transactions. Now, ano-ano po ba ito? Class, magkaiba po itong earning accretion or dilution ha? or siya. Either earning accretion or earning dilution. Class, pag sinabi po natin na earning accretion, dito muna tayo. Pataas. Ang effect niya sa earnings. Pag dilution, pababa naman. Ano? O, ayan po. Para lang ano, kung sakali na medyo nalilito kayo, when we are talking of the concepts, if you are trying to remember them, accretion, accrete, no? pataas, dilute, dilution, pababa. Okay, bakit? Ano ang ibig nito sabihin? Pag ang pinag-uusapan natin ay earning accretion, okay, this refers to the additional value inputted. Tama ba yung term? Inputted. <laughs> Okay, additional value inputted in the calculation that would account for the increase in the value of the firm. Okay, for example, yun nga, no, potential growth. No? Price increases. Operating efficiencies. Okay, syempre, no, um, itong mga factors na ito will affect the value of the firm. Kasi class, no, pag may mga op operational inefficiencies, Uh, let's talk about the negative, di ba? Halimbawa, ito lang isa. Ang isa, sampulan natin. Okay, operational in, uh, inefficiencies, no? Um, pag binili ka ng isang company at ang daming inefficiencies sa company mo, makakaka-apekto yun sa pag-value magkano. Eh, eh, ang dami mong inefficiencies eh. So, bakit kita bibili ng mas mataas? Okay, so bawa, babaan natin. Okay, but of course, no, if there are operational efficiencies, If the company was able to manage it well, of course, it will affect, no? It will have a positive impact in the value of the firm. Ang tawag natin dyan ay earning accretion. Samantala, pag earning dilution, ayun kabaligtaran. It reduces the value, no? When there are future circumstances that affects the firm negatively. Okay. Uh, so, yan po ano, no? yung ating earning accretion or dilution. Pangalawang factor, yung tinatawag natin na equity control premium. Ano naman yan, sir? Bakit may maliit na bilog dyan na nakapasok dito sa malaking bilog? <laughs> okay? O, oh, kung makikita ninyo, ano? iba yung kulay niya. Itong maliit na bilog na ito sa malaking bilog. Pag pinag-uusapan natin yung equity control premium, if you recall premium sa inyong mga intermediate accounting, di ba? Kabaligtaran, di ba, ng discount? Anong effect nun? Dinadagdagan, di ba? Halimbawa, ang face value ng bonds mo ay 1,000. Okay? Meron kang premium, 10. O di maging 1,010, di ba? Anong epekto ng premium? Tumataas, di ba, yung value? Okay? So, equity control premium is the amount added to the value of the firm in order to gain control of it. Okay? So, that is the term. Samantalang, pagdating naman dito sa precedent transactions, ano naman po? Okay, when we are measuring the value of the firm, precedent transactions are risks that may affect a firm's ability to realize projected earnings. Okay? So, doon sa earning uh, accretion, earning dilution. No? Earning accretion, pataas yung value. Dilution, pababa. Dito naman, no, pag equity control premium, normally, ano, may dinadagdag tayo sa value. Okay? And we are adding a, a particular amount. No? Siyempre, because we want to take control of it. Okay? Samantalang pag precedent transactions, and when we are talking of risks, no, chances are, maaaring Uh, it will affect the ano, no, the value of the firm negatively. Okay? Okay, so risks, di ba? What can go wrong? Diba? Alright. So, these are the factors, di ba? Or the key, uh, yes, no? Factors. Now, 
In terms of the key drivers in income-based valuation, please take note that with reference to our book, meron silang dalawang minensyon. At hindi na po ito bago. Ito po yung weighted average cost of capital and number two, yung capital asset pricing model. Okay? Class, we have mentioned this in another presentation, in another video lecture, when we, well, or when I presented to you the cost of capital. Okay? So, hindi na po ito bago sa inyo. Weighted average cost of capital and then the capital asset pricing uh, model. O, oh, class, no? Basahin ko lang, no? Kung ano yung nakasaad sa libro. Kasi, ayan, no? Wala tayong nilagay dito na text. Anong sinasabi dito? Weighted average cost of capital or WACC formula can be used in determining the minimum required return. O kasi di ba we are talking about a certain percentage na naka-average, no? Magkano yung cost of capital? Lalong lalo na kung we are talking about uh, cost of debt and then meron kang cost of equity. May certain percentages tayo doon. So, ginagamit natin weighted cost of capital, no? weighted average. Okay, so, syempre, na kukuha natin magkano on an average, no, yung minimum required rate. Okay? So, it can be used to determine the appropriate cost of capital by weighing the portion of the asset funded through equity and debt. Kasi, syempre, alam naman po natin, no, that when we are sourcing funds, it can either come from cap, ano no, uh, debt, iuutangin natin, or it can come from equity funding. Okay? By issuing shares of stocks. Okay? WACC may also include, uh, syempre, no, we also mentioned this, alibawa, preferred stocks and retained earnings. Okay? Now, the cost of equity may also be derived using the capital asset pricing model or CAPM. And paninisent ko rin naman ito sa inyo before kung papaano po yung ating mga formulas doon. But we will not tackle with it here in details because we already explained, we already discussed it previously. Okay? The purpose of uh, this, I don't know, uh, participation of WACC and CAPM is because they are key drivers in income-based valuation. Okay? Although class, no, please take note, although we are referring to income-based valuation here, okay, we can still, of course, no, pag WACC, pinag-uusapan kasi natin dito, di ba? Cost of capital from debt, from equity. So, we are not purely based on the statement of financial performance no but also the statement of financial position okay now meron tayong eto oh, na banggit ko kanina di ba meron tayong uh, what do you call this mga topics na kailangan tandaan kailangan po ninyong i-consider no if if you can memorize that would be better Although, simple lang naman class ito. Madali lang naman po itong tandaan. Pero syempre, it's up to you kung tatatak po ito sa inyong mga memorya. Now, it may be observed no? uh, that the cost of capital is a major driver in determining the equity value using income-based approaches. Okay? In the succeeding discussions, which it starts from here no economic value added okay um tawag nito the value of the stocks will be based on the value of the cash flows that the company will generate and syempre no how do we measure it so we have this uh, approach number 1 which is economic value added eva okay we have cem yung pangalawang approach na i-discuss natin later on and pangatlo is the discounted cash flow method or the D the DCF. Okay, although for the DCF, no, we will deal with it separately. Now, 
pag-usapan po natin itong economic value added or simply we call it the excess earnings. Now, bakit? Kasi class, ano bang sinusukat nitong EVA or economic value added? Uh, please take note, it measures the ability of the firm to support its cost of capital using its earnings. So we are ano no, referencing our discussion or our computations through the cost of capital. No? Ano bang formula nito? Oh, tignan ninyo ito, class. EVA is simply the difference between the earnings and then the cost of capital. Kaya nga, sinasabi natin that this is your excess earnings. Quote, tama ba? Quote, unquote. No? Oh, for example, lagyan natin, uh, mamaya, sige, mamaya na lang. Class, when, when considering the economic value added, meron tayo dito dalawang players. No? We have your earnings and then you have your cost of capital. For us to appropriately measure the economic value added para mas reasonable, mas accurate, no? mas tama yung makukompute natin, we have to consider the earnings and then the cost of capital. Pag ang pinag-uusapan natin ay earnings, we should consider the reasonableness of earnings or returns. Okay? Samantalang pag cost of capital naman, the appropriateness. Earnings, reasonable. Baka naman masyadong bloated. Masyadong over, ano, overestimate tayo. Dapat reasonable lang. Dapat conservative tayo. Okay? Pag cost of capital naman, appropriate pa. Kaya nga, pag cost of capital, appropriate na gamitin natin, no? weighted average. Now, now, let's take a look here. Yung cost of capital natin, we have mentioned in the past, uh, different formulas. If we are referring to cost of debt, to cost of preferred stock, to the cost of common stocks, no, even the cost of retained earnings. Okay, but one way, uh, of course, no, wag na natin kalimutan yung WACC. But one way of solving for the cost of capital is also by looking at this one. Investment value times the rate of cost of capital. Okay? Gagamitin kasi natin yan. Para ma-appreciate po ninyo ito, we have an illustration here. Chandelier Company. Projected earnings. Projected earnings. No? Please take note. Ha? To be 350 million per year. The board of directors decided to sell the company, ibebenta daw yung company for 1.5 billion with the cost of capital appropriate for this type of business at 10%. Now, ang tinatanong, pakisolve nga ng economic value added. Now, how do we solve for that? Eto class, no, simple computation lang naman ito. Wala naman itong complications sa formula, di ba? O yun lang naman, earnings minus cost of capital. But how do we pick up or how do we solve for it? Ano ang gagawin, gagawin ko dito sa mga figures na in-underline natin? Alin dito yung earnings? Alin dito yung cost of capital? Ano yung 350 million? Ano yung 1.5 billion? Ano yung 10%? Ah, class. Uh, let's show the solution. Ayan. Ilaruin lang natin no, yung formula. If economic value added equals earnings minus cost of capital, wherein the cost of capital is the investment value times the rate of COC, o edi ayusin natin yung ating formula magiging earnings minus investment value times the cost of capital, which is expressed as a percentage. So with that, ito po ang ating solusyon. Yung earnings mo dyan ay yung 350 million. Okay? Yan po yung earnings. Hindi yan yung excess earnings. Ha? Yan yung earnings mo. Projected earnings in this case. Now, 
yung investment value is the 1.5 billion. Diba? The board of directors decided to sell the company for 1.5 billion. If the cost of capital is uh, if the rate no is 10% or applying this investment value times rate of COC. Okay? At the 1.5 billion times 10%, makukuha natin 150 million. And since meron tayo ditong 350 million na earnings minus the cost of capital of 150 million. So, ang economic value added mo is 200 million. Excess earnings. Bakit excess? Eh kasi we are projecting that we will be receiving or we will be getting 350 million per year. Yan yung earnings mo. But syempre, may cost yun. Magkano yung cost mo? 10% ng investment value, which is 150. So, this is the excess earnings. 200. Okay. So that is our simple illustration ano, of the economic value add. Okay, now, pag-usapan naman natin, class, yung capitalization of earnings method. Ano naman po ang capitalization of earnings method? Okay? Yan. Oh. Basahin ko rin para ma-appreciate po ninyo kung ano yung ibig nito sabihin na visual. According to the book, the value of the company can also be associated with the anticipated returns or income earnings based on the historical earnings and expected earnings. Okay? In valuing the firm, no, we can look at the anticipated returns. What are we expecting? Siyempre, no, when we are anticipating returns, when we are projecting, it should be based on what happened in the past. Diba? Historical earnings and expected earnings. Okay, so yun po yung tinutukoy nitong visual na ito. Ano? Okay. Now, earnings are typically interpreted as resulting cash flows. Okay? Uh, resulting cash flows from operations but net income may also be used if the cash flow information is not available. So when we are talking of earnings, no, typically, usually, we are referring to cash flows. Pero pwede naman natin gamitin yung net income pag hindi available yung cash flow information. Okay. Now. Ayan. Ah, sige, mamaya na yung illustration. Anong tinutukoy nito? Anong ibig nito sabihin? Meron tayong capitalization of earnings method. Ito yung nandito sa gitna. Okay, this one. Meron tayo ditong estimated earnings of the company. Meron tayong expected yield or the required rate of return. Meron tayong estimated equity value. Anong ibig nito sabihin? yung equity value mo daw is equals your future earnings divided by the required rate of returns. Your estimated equity value is equals your future earnings, the estimated earnings of the company, divided by the expected yield or the required rate of return. So, eto po pala yun. Okay, na tinutukoy lang nitong visuals na ito. Now, let me read from the book para mas ma-appreciate po natin. In capitalized earnings method, the value of the asset or investment is determined using the anticipated earnings of the company divided by the capitalization rate which is, for example, yung cost of capital. Okay, this method provides for the relationship of the, number one, Estimated earnings of the company. Itong nasa taas. Okay? Number two, expected yield or the required rate of return. Itong, number, itong nasa kanan. And number three, ec uh, estimated equity value. And therefore, we have this formula. Now, let's illustrate this one. A mobile Incorporated expects to earn 450,000 per year expecting a return of 
or at 12%. Actually class madali lang din naman, di ba? Madali lang ito ano, yung yung formula niya, ang simple simple lang. Parang yung economic value added, di ba? Earnings minus cost of capital. Dito naman sa capitalization of earnings method, future earnings divided by required return. Okay. Oh, ito lang no. Ito lang yung illustration, ito lang hinahanap. Now, how do we solve for it? Oh, we simply divide 450,000 with the 12%. And that is your equity value. The value of the firm is estimated to be at 3.75 million. Why? We are expecting okay to be ano no, we are expecting 450,000 per year. Eh, yung required return mo is 12%. Divide mo. 3.75. Okay? So, 3.75 million. Dito, class, we are assuming that we will receive a steady or fixed um, amount or of future earnings per year. Pero papaano, class, pag paiba-iba? Hindi magkakaparehas. Which is the more common, no? Hindi naman kasi yan palagi fixed na every year ganito yung expected earnings natin. Chances are magkakaiba yan. So how do we solve for that? For example, consider this no year 1 to 5 and this is our expected cash flow. Okay, the projected cash flow no net cash flows in Philippine peso in the next 5 years. At yung minimum required rate of return natin ay 12%. Ano gagawin ko dyan? Year 1 mo, meron kang 450,000. Year 2, 500. Year 3, 650. Year 4, 700. Year 5, 750. Parang if you remember, no, yung growth rate, di ba? Ito naman, may steady tayo na increase sa cash flow. 50,000 every year. Anong gagawin ko dyan? Papaano natin yan isusolve? To calculate no, the equity value with variable cash flows, we need to get the average in the given period. So ang gagawin natin class, i-add natin itong lima, i-divide ng lima. Add mo yan, yung total niyan divided by 5, yan po yung ating average annual cash flow. So, i-add natin ito. Sandali, bakit naging 610 yan? Ah, aver sorry. Akala ko total. O, oh, class, follow me ha. Hindi po, hindi po yan, uh, hindi po yan, ano no, sum. That is already the average. Pero para sigurado tayo, pakisundan, kunin po ninyo yung inyong mga calculator. Paki-add, 450 plus 500. O, oh, plus, kano? 650. Ah, hindi naman pala 50,000 every year. Karoon lang pala ng increment. Ano no? May discrepancy sa year 2 and 3. Plus 700 plus 750. Ang total niyan ay 3,050,000. Divide mo sa 5. Okay? Magkano yon? Makukuha mo itong 610. So, tama naman ito. Okay? So, this is our answer. 610 ang magiging numerator for the future earnings. Divide natin ngayon ng 12%. Okay, nga class, this is our equity, estimated equity value. 5,083,333. That is the equity value. Okay? I hope uh, malinaw po ito sa inyo. Plus, please take note of this one. Ano sabi dito? In the valuation process, yung 5 million daw dito, or exactly 5,083,332, includes all assets. Okay? We are assuming no that it includes all assets. However, no? Hindi kasi sa lahat ng pagkakataon, lahat ng assets ay income generating. May mga iba dyan na idle, hindi naman ginagamit para mag-generate ng earnings. 
So in or in this original problem, no, we are assuming that lahat ng mga assets dito ay income generating. Ginagamit natin to generate income. Pero syempre, may mga ibang assets siya na idle talaga. Alam naman siguro natin no kung anong ibig sabihin ng term na idle. Diba? Halimbawa sa mga machineries, idle, nakatiwangwang, hindi ginagamit. Diba? Okay. Kung meron po tayo, please take note of this one. And this is important. If there are idle assets, the amount will be added to compute for the total equity value. Dito, we are assuming that the 5 million ay lahat po ng assets ay income generating. Pero in, in the instance, in the event that there are idle assets in the problem, we have to add it. Uh, extended problem type or extended illustration. Assume, no, in the previous illustration, meron po tayong idle assets. Although kasi class dito sa problem, wala namang breakdown ng mga assets. Pero meron lang tayo dito ang additional statement. There are idle assets amounting to 1.35 million. So, if we are asked, what is the total or the updated equity value? Eh di 5,083,333. Add mo yung idle assets na 1.35 million. So, the equity value ay 6,433,333. Ito pong 5 million is the equity value using the capitalized earnings method plus the idle assets that, are incorpor uh, that should be incorporated. So, the total equity value should be at 6.4 million pesos. Alright? So, kindly process this in your minds. Paki-post ng video. Although, class, no, these are simple illustrations naman. Okay, so, uh, hopefully, maintindihan po ninyo ito, ano, by just simply solving for it. Okay? However, meron, naman, meron tayong limitations sa paggamit ng CEM. Why? It does not fully account for the future earnings or cash cash flows thereby resulting to over or under valuation. No, um ito po ay normal na ano naman. Uh, there are always ano no, reservations when we are estimating. And when we are estimating, we are basing our ano no, our assumptions on the current events that are available to us or on the information that are available to us. Okay? Given our resources, no, yung ating mga mechanisms, machineries na meron tayo at the time. So kung may mga ibang information na hindi available to us, which will also definitely affect earnings, no? pero without uh, not to our knowledge. So, syempre, it will also affect no, the computations. So, our limitation number one is that it does not fully account for the future earnings or cash flows. So, the valuation can be over or under. Hindi po nito nakukonsider yung mga contingencies. And last, no, assumptions used to determine the cash flows may not hold true since the projections are based on a limited time horizon. And that is normal. Yan naman, ano, projections naman natin. O halimbawa, excuse me, balikan lang natin, ano, uh, before the pandemic, hindi naman inaasahan na magkakaroon ng pandemic. Hindi naman tayo siguro si Nostradamus na ande by 2019 magkakaroon ng mga pandemic. So, maapektuhan yung mga sales. Magsasarado yung maraming company. Ganito, ganito. So, when the companies made their projections, made their budgetary process, made their estimates, forecast, no? In 2018, for 2019 and onward, salibawa, sabi na natin, they projected, ano, no? Um, they made projections for the next five years. And that happened in 2018. So, meron silang projections for 2019 to 2023. Hindi nila nako-consider doon ano yung mga contingencies no no what if worst comes to worst okay they may ano no maaring hindi po nila na-consider 
So when the pandemic happened, so definitely no, nagbago yung lahat. So syempre yung projections natin ay best uh, based on the best available information that we have at the moment. Okay? And syempre no, based on a limited time horizon. Okay? So there you go class. I'll I'll try especially for my actual students, no. I'll try to provide you with additional illustrations para may pangdagdag tayo no for the capitalization of earnings method for the economic value added no you may try to answer the end of chapter ano no questions multiple choice which also inclu include core ano no computations okay so para ma support naman ano or ma try din po ninyo if you can answer or if you can get it correctly kung nakuha po talaga ninyo yung konsepto na intindihan ninyo ito okay so, there you go, class. Hanggang dito lamang po muna itong aking video lecture for income-based valuation. Sana po ay malinaw. Kung malabo man, please let me know. But hanggang dito po muna itong ating discussion para sa panahon na ito, para sa topic na ito. I will see you in my next recordings, in my next presentation. Maraming salamat. Bye-bye.